Bonnie Johnny, everyone. This is Professor Amin Ra, Professor Emeritus, California State University of Long Beach, uh, Africana Studies Department, former professor of ethnic studies, psychology, and African American history at Compton Community College, former board of trustees for the Compton Unified School District, former trustee for the Compton Community College and former city councilman of the fourth district for the city of Compton. We wanna welcome you here along with the most outstanding historian that we have uh, as, a, as my co-host and outstanding educator, former administrator, coach and teacher for Compton and Linwood Unified School District. But a individual that spends a lot of time doing his independent research of, of us as a people going all the way back to the beginnings. And that's the beautiful thing about Brother Hembrick, Brother Joe Hembrick, a master historian, and we deeply appreciate him co hosting the show. This is a conscious corner. When we say conscious, that means, you know, you, we wake people up. We're like an alarm clock. We don't ring on Uncle Tom notes and we don't ring on uh, notes that does not reflect the best of African thought and practice. Um, our whole intention is to discuss critical issues that we think affect the quality of life of African people. And we don't just talk about what the system has done to us. We talk about what we did to the system. And that's a very important thing they always want to say. Like Malcolm said, we may not be responsible for being down, but we are responsible for getting up and correcting the, uh, the individuals that may have knocked us down. And as Baba Keeley says, as long as we're fighting, we're free. As long as we're fighting, we got a chance. So we commend all the black people that are in struggle and doing the best they can to uh, 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 work for the interests of the Black community on every institutional level. So without any further delay, we're getting ready to start the show. Brother Hembrick, did you have any welcoming words? Uh, just like to welcome everyone, just returning from having a commune with nature, the Netaru, it was outstanding. Uh, trying to wake some folk up, but had folk from all over the country that were in attendance and uh, had, had a great time, needed it. Uh, it was great. So without any further ado, continue on with the show and deal with the issues. All right, tonight's gonna be a different format. We're gonna discuss uh, what are critical issues. Uh, if we were to name five, three to five, critical issues that we think black people need to address. This is the year of elections, uh, what they call midterm. This is the year, uh, we're also in the month of June where we're getting ready to celebrate Juneteenth. I understand the mayor of Los Angeles has proclaimed it as a holiday, a paid holiday for city workers, even though it's a national holiday that has not started yet but uh, for him to uh, sign the proclamation today, designated uh, June 19th as a um, holiday, paid holiday, or Juneteenth as a paid holiday whenever they celebrate uh, in Los Angeles with pay. Uh, and so we wanna discuss critical issues. So we're gonna start off with brother Machinda, who's in the deep south and he's gonna, uh, you know, just, uh, Machinda, if you were talking to a group, a church group, a community group, young people, uh, as uh, individual uh, groups or either collectively, what would you think would be the three issues that, or uh, three to five issues that you think that you would discuss that they should be aware of? Well, good evening. Um, well, you know, I, I would address them from it's you know bring up the fact you know from an educational standpoint 
I mean, I know there's, you know, people in the education arena, but, you know, you were saying like addressing a church or a, a civic group or somebody, you know, getting them involved in the process in terms of, uh, you know, like school board meetings, things like that, you know, kind of mobilizing, <clears throat> mobilizing people they just to get involved in something, you know, stimulate, you know, provoke thought and discussion, get involved and kind of thing. And so anyway, um, so education, you know, definitely is, I mean, at the, at all levels, you know, has to be addressed. Uh, it's not just a school board issue, you know, it's a community issue, you know, and, and you know, and I'm, I work in education and I understand the relationship with this community and where I work at, you know, it's more or less that there's disconnections. My job is to try to forge a relationship. And so I go to schools, high schools, and we have young kids and whoever, we have a lot of different things. I go to the park on Saturday at the big events, set up tables and try to, you know, uh, get them involved in, you know, trying to get a trade or do something with themselves. You know, you know, we have various trades that they can learn. Uh, the streets, you know, is pulling a lot of them, but, you know, at the same time, um, they just started like a heavy equipment operator, you know. It's all brothers in there, you know. So what I'm saying is, well, one white dude and about eight brothers and um, and one sister. And it's a 12-week program. But my point is, they, it's, it's, you asked about businesses earlier and what's going on. You know, business is another one, you know, promote business development um, and financial literacy. You know, those things have to be addressed, you know, because... You know, there's a lot going on in the, in the in the market, you know, and economically, and you know, we need to, you know, understand from a foundation, basically at a, at least a basic level, uh, to understand what's going on. And there are a lot of people who do understand. Don't get me wrong; I'm not going to discount them. They they're people who understand. But I'm saying really, when, when you but reaching the kid, you know, and so trying to attack that, you know, that surface, you know, because. You know, I mean, we don't have to neglect any other levels, but I said we really got to plant some seeds. So anyway, education, and financial literacy, and business development are critical issues that that are, are lacking. But here, I am seeing some growth here, some mindset changes. You know, so um, but you know, again, podcast, you know, self talk, self, you know, self teaching. You know, you can go to pod. There's all kind of financial. Uh, literacy podcasts and things like that. Uh, anyway, we have a lot of resources, a lot of resources and, and, and trying to link the community, uh, you know, the people in need to these resources. You know, uh, a lot of people are uh, not there, uh, I guess you could say technologically, you know, challenged, you know, which is, um, and people are without the internet in certain places, you know, how do we address those issues? You know, the, the digital divide, that's what we call it, you know, where the haves and the have nots. And so everybody, since um, Internet is such a integral part of our lives, you know, in terms of, um, you know, of course, if you're active in school or working and making transactions, paying bills, you know, there's the old conventional ways to do things. I don't like people if they mail their bills in or that type of thing, but there's it's it's a tool. And so. Everybody should be afforded these tools, you know, to be able to compete, you know. And so um, a lot of taxpayers' pay money, you know, go to different things. And, you know, I guess we got to make good decisions on how do we appropriate the money to sort of go in the areas that are, um, you know, most important. You know? So anyway, you know, so that's my take right now. I mean, I'll think about it some more, but uh, I think those are critical areas that need to be addressed. And if you were to address them, uh, recommend, make some recommendations in education, economics, and business, uh, what would you what would you recommend? I mean, what would be a strategy to solve some of those issues? Well, I mean, you know, there are already strategies in play, you know, uh, but just to, I mean, you know, I mean, it depends on who we're dealing with, you know, the group that we're dealing with, you know. So we say a strategy. I was just given the overall, you know, uh, areas that need to be addressed. Now, as far as, you know, again, financial literacy, you know, the, well, organizations can join one another. We, you know, we can, you know, point people in the right directions into getting these resources. 
you know, that's, you know, in order to, you know, if there's like, like I said, there's free resources. There are people that can be invited to come give workshops and things like that. So, I mean, that's already going on. There are some churches that do that. You know, they have somebody come to the church and talk about, you know, retirement. How, are you saving, you know, some basic things, you know, some, because there's a lot of, a lot of people out there I know that I talk to that are, they don't understand a lot of these things. So the, the strategy would be, I mean, really, I don't know what I'd have to put that together, but I don't, I don't really have a, uh, you know, I'd have to go dig in my notes and, and, and break down my strategy, but. Okay. Um, it's not really my strategy. It's, it's so, you know, what I'm saying is it's a, it's an idea and something I've been like, in, I do my part in this. Like, in other words, you talk about financial literacy. I, as an individual, I educate others, youngsters and people within my path about, you know, make, uh, make them, do they understand uh, the stock market? Do they understand real estate? Do they understand business? Do they understand credit rating? Those kind of things. So it's an ongoing thing, but I'm just saying having having individuals to join in in that conversation, you know, and there are people that's doing it, you know. So it's 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 a uh, real estate. I mean, there's there are all kind of real estate schools and and free real estate information, and there are real estate people that can address people, you know. So I'm just saying that that's just the business area, and you have the educational area, and and uh, you know, again, the digital divide, you know. How do you do it? The, the you know the got get the people got to go out and vote. They got a guy that's a black guy that's running for mayor out here, okay? And he's got signs everywhere, and he's his platform is that he you know some of the things that I'm talking about. So he's you know so I'm you know hoping that he gets in there and you know the signs don't vote. So I hope the people get out there. There's always sometimes there's low voter turnouts and things like that to where it, you know you lose by a few votes. So hopefully this young uh generation gets in there with his good ideas and move forward this is going to be the first time where you know a black male is going to get in there and and and, and um you know make put his agenda they have already black city council people that's on there i know three of them so that you know the conversation is you know people are working together you know already but i'm just saying i'm just throwing it out there for ideas it's like you know people need to get on board with that if they're not doing it you know that's all mm -hmm. Okay, well, thanks, brother, for that. Brother Rossi, brother Rossi Key, what do you think are some of the critical issues we face if you were to uh, prioritize one to five or one to three? Well, um, in the arena that I work in, uh, and then just um, there's, there's some basic things that, that people should start doing. One of them is being a, a person that follow rules. Because if I know that if you're driving in the community and if you're driving anywhere, there are a plethora of people who don't follow rules, the driving rules. And you have all these car accidents and near accidents because of the inability to follow rules and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, when I'm teaching, I have structure in the classroom where students have to follow rules, even if the whole school is not following rules, I make sure my students follow rules, be on time, and I advocate that because when you don't follow rules, there's more chaos. And, and, and that, I think that's real critical because and I, I know you everybody on here drives. And, it, and if, if you constantly practice and breaking rules, it's gonna come to bite you and other people around you at times. So I, I, I advocate that. Then something that I learned from you is that I've been teaching for 27 years. And when I was in high school, I didn't develop the habits of studying. Any, even if you're not a person who plans to further your education beyond high school, you should get in the habit of 
being able to sit down and focus on something and carry out a task, a given task. And I have a host of students that were similar to me that don't study and they can't remember one thing from the next thing after maybe about it. If you have, if you're teaching a subject matter and, and you work on it for a week, the students will retain it for that week, but then you come back three weeks later, over half of them don't retain the information because they don't, they may do homework or they may not do homework, but it's not actually mastering the subject matter. And, it, and the importance of do, doing that is that whenever you're faced with a, a, a issue at your home, in, in the neighborhoods, you will be able to critically think about what you're doing and be able to figure some things out because you have the habit, it's another habit, the habit of studying and, and focusing on things. It teaches you patience also. We, we're in the computer age where people get things instantaneously, but everything doesn't work that way. Sometimes you have to figure some things out. You have, you get packages from Amazon where you have to put things together. A lot of people don't have the patience to sit down and put together like a shelf. And it comes with instructions. You gotta have patience. And then another thing is awareness. Awareness of your environment. Being aware of, of what you're doing and how you're doing and, and how, how you could be a benefit of your environment by doing the things you should be doing and being practical, being constructive. A lot of people are, don't really realize what's going on in their own environment. A lot of people don't even look at news. They don't read newspapers. And, and know what's going on. So those are just a few things that I was thinking about as you was asking Brother Machinda, you know, and, and I know there's a lot of critical issues going on, like the, you know, the, the shootings, the multitude of shootings. You have elections coming up. There's a whole, you know, life in, in, encompasses a whole bunch of things that you have to be aware of. And people are not, not aware of what's going on around the corner at times. And, and it could be something of a high magnitude going on, but they're so caught up in things that are not important. They won't even think to look at an alert to come across your phone. You know, we have these, these technological uh, instruments, phones, computers, and all of that. And you have, Amber alerts that come through, you know, and they won't even look at that. So those are a few things that I was thinking about as you was asking, you know, Brother Machinda about that. Mm, that's good. That's okay. good. Brother Hendrick, if you were to itemize some issues that you think were crucial to black people, uh, what would what would you discuss? Uh Jotting some little stuff down. Uh, I think unity, the mojo, us dealing with each other, socially, economically. I wish we could do that in terms of educationally, but you know that had to be a separate thing from the regular school system, pretty much. Um, you know, we. I was on, on that trip. I was just on. Uh, some people have visited Spain as part of uh, this kid's graduation, and they got treated real bad up there. And I was telling them, well, you know, did you expect anything different? That's Europe. Uh, but I see a lot of people, even, you know, those that vacation, you know, I see very few of them going to Africa. You know, they want to go to 
Europe, France, when a woman talking about wanting to see the Eiffel Tower and all that old kind of stuff. So, you know, just a, a unity in mind. And, you know, being so, and, and that was a black tour group that went over there. So that's one area. Second area, I think uh, we get to deal with is uh, uh, a cultural consciousness, which kind of ties into the unity a little bit. <clears throat> uh, you know, to knowing the values that are for black people. And, you know, you know, many of us that don't know anything about our history and stuff like that, and know about our culture, you know, before we come here, that's, that's, a, that's a big task, because, you know, we was raised on the plantation and went from there. But even with that, you know, there's a, there, was, there was a lot of bad that was learned on that plantation, you know, in terms of the stuff that was going on uh, with the slave masters and overseers, and all of that whole scenario. Uh, a third area that I think we need to deal with is, uh, is, is the protection of black people, which the number one thing I like to talk about is our health. We need to really focus in on being healthy, being able to last, being able to, you know, be there for our children and grandchildren as far as health go, instead of falling prey to these fast food diets and all the stuff that destroys our health. Uh, uh, water, which is essential to life. I find a whole lot of black people won't drink water. I talked to one guy. He told me he was getting he was he he was getting water from his beer. And I told him, I said, man, you ain't gonna be there long. Uh, but people need to know that your body is mostly water, so you must put water in there to maintain a healthy balance in your body. And, uh, you know, the number one killer, I think, which is more than drugs, is that doggone alcohol, man. That stuff has got us all messed up. Uh, people suffer from so many ailments of, you know, alcohol consumption. And if you have a health issue and you are consuming alcohol along with your medication, you know, you're doing yourself no good. Because the alcohol is stopping the medication from doing what it's supposed to do. So just stuff like that, uh, you know, which we're light years away from where I think we need to be. I think the churches could be really essential if they had the might, if they had the right framework of some of these issues, uh, uh, because they got the people coming. But I won't even get into you know, what the most of the time is spent in there, but you know, that's what they do. Uh, if we can have more of a, a Vernon Johns type of ministries going around the country, that brother was outstanding. He was teaching a lot of the stuff through his congregation, the things I brought up. He was the brother that was at that church right, right before Martin Luther King came. Actually, he was uh, terminated from a lot of churches for teaching the truth. And standing up way before the civil rights thing actually got rolling. And uh, I guess you can Google his movie. I think it was financed by uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. It's called The Vernon John Story. It was played by James Earl Jones. Anyway, that's, that's about it. Just the top three. There's a long laundry list that people could put down, but you know, you know, those three will suffice. All right. Professor Rock. Yeah. Uh, Brother Waze just came in. You want to ask him uh, about it? Yeah, Brother Waze. Waze, yeah. Yeah, how you doing, Brother Waze? <laughs> hey, yeah. I'm doing all right. Uh, Professor Ra, how you doing? Can you hear me? Good, good. Yeah, how's your mom and everybody? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, we doing all, all right. We doing, yeah, we, you know, just bless. Right. Yeah, we doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, sir. yeah. Your your uh, your wife uh, was over here for my birthday briefly. Yeah. Did she tell you about it? Uh, yeah, but you know we. <laughs> yeah, her and my mother they got the same birthday, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, July fifteenth. 
<laughs> yeah, and they came well, home by up. my birthday. <laughs> coming up. It's coming yeah. up. Uh-huh. Well, listen, um, we were just discussing what we think were critical issues that um, we face as Black people, that if you were talking to a congregation or young school kids or family members at the dinner table, what would you say were the, the, the between or one and what three and uh, five major points that you think we should focus on as Black people? Or as human beings, if you don't see us as a racial group? Well, one, for me, I would focus on just trying to be morally upright, you know, just having that as a focus, mm -hmm. um, shifting the culture and the music that we listen to, having more uplifting music instead of, you know, just the glorifying of certain ill elements within the society uh, that has, you know, mm -hmm. just been popularized within our culture. So for one, me, uh, moral uprightness would be up there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just trying to live a clean life uh, mm -hmm. with relation to other human beings and ourselves. Um, number two, I would say we need some type of unified spiritual system to that guides all of us as opposed to just the different uh, multitude of 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 spiritual um, avenues that you know we we participate in we need some type of unity with regard to our spiritual system in my opinion and um so those are just the top two that I can think of off the top of my head right now. Okay. Well, that's good. I appreciate your, your, your perspective and spiritual and ethic, eth uh, ethical and moral uh, behavior is always a, a good, good, good recommendation. You know, we as a, we, we, we sometimes, uh, it says, our conditions create consciousness. And Malcolm X said at one time that one of the most important things that we must teach young people and be about ourselves is to think, to think, to get out of the people dominating our understanding of the world and who we are and where we are and come up with our own understanding of our reality based upon facts and based upon the reality of our conditions because so many times uh, people think we should be happy and dancing and partying as you say uh, uh, ways uh, our lives away to decadent music and decadent lifestyles versus being comfortable in your own oppression in other words but I agree with what everyone has said. And to a certain degree, we all sort of entangled with uh, 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 specific perspectives, that, but they come on the themes that are very important. And as Brother Hendricks said, one of the primary things that we must begin to teach young people at an early age, and I think um, uh, my brother uh, Rasha Key would agree to this, is the importance of our, our health. Our health is the most important thing. There's no need in, uh, in being smart if your life expectancy is short based upon your behavior, as Joe was pointing out, uh, and, and, and Wazy was pointing out, Wazy was pointing out about using drugs, alcohol, and thinking that that uh, eating bad, uh, not paying attention, and not paying this attention to pathologies that's out there, pandemics is out there. We must, you know, you don't need the European to tell you how to deal with a pandemic when you can uh, keep up with the statistics and data your, yourself the best you can to mass media, internet, as Brother Machinda was saying, uh, searching for information about what's going on because 
you know, we have a high rate of uh, of life of, of, of death, uh, even if you want to classify gun violence as a as a um, a health uh, crisis uh, in in our communities and among uh, young people in our community. So what we 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 really must teach as as as, as uh, Basically, say the importance of of, 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 of of spiritual strength that allows you to have a positive outlook on of your brothers and sisters, rather than seeing them through the eyes of self hate. From as Malcolm said, from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head, they taught you to hate yourself, uh, hate your looks, hate your nose, hate your mouth, hate your lips, hate each other. Uh, even though you can be uh, from the same neighborhood around the corner. Uh, you end up shooting at each other or fighting each other. So uh, that's not an accident. I mean, they did the Native American that way. They had the Apaches fighting the Chiricahuas, the Chiricahuas fighting the uh, whatever other group that was out there, Apaches, and all of that uh, is a part of the system, divide and conquer. Uh, and so health, mental, spiritual, and physical health, is 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 a priority from the standpoint of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of of being a, uh, a, a one of the major issues. Even if you want to teach from the struggle, which is the second, uh, and the reality of our conditions, not just in America, because America make you think everything's all right. I mean. Uh, they got black people around the world thinking that we all are ebony. Uh, uh, magazine uh, uh, models uh, standing in front of Rolls Royces, drinking, and making commercials about the best thing in life, uh, sitting on the beach and in, in, in your bathrobe and drinking a Michelo or drinking something and all of that. I mean, the, the, they give out mixed messages worldwide, but the, the conditions worldwide of African people. It's something we have to research ourselves and educate others uh, to develop a pan-African thrust. But the point is, is that, you know, uh, uh, we must uh, control the narrative of our conditions and our reality. Uh, we used to have a class in Long Beach called Black Reality. They changed it to uh, African-American uh, social thought and, uh, and, 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 and you know, it's uh, an introduction to black studies. But uh, the reason we as students said black reality is because so many of our people were living in a fantasy, living in as if they white, as if they don't have no problems and all that. Other black people got problems, but they don't have no problems. And they don't see themselves as interconnected, interrelated. The other issue is, is that Many of us focus on just black people in America. We're not Wally Wingo. Wally Wingo is why you work for worldly people. Um, you ask black people about Malcolm, Martin Luther King, they know about American people, and maybe one of the international people, Nelson Mandela. But if you ask them about Yomo Kenyatta or um, Julius Noguer or um, uh, Nzinka, uh, our Shaka Zulu and their history, they don't know that. So we have to have a worldview of life uh, and a world understanding. I think that should be up there also, as far as 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 as, as that. Then as as uh, um, uh, in Chinga was M. Chinga was saying, uh, economic reality, inflation is a crisis in the black community. And how to deal with inflation today when gas is going up to six dollars in California, and then five ninety nine in other parts of the country, and you know, regardless of why it's that high, how do we cope with it? How do we conduct our behavior as if that 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 don't mean anything? Uh, that well, I gotta go. I gotta keep my same habits, even though. Gas is double, and you're driving like it's not double. I'm just gonna drive up to Vegas. I'm just gonna drive 
and go on a cruise in uh, San Diego and back. And, you know, and then, and then saying, well, oh, I, I really need gas to go to work or to go to school. So that's very critical. And then, as I said, education is always important. Malcolm said that, educational attainment. But we must encourage our people, not just to get a high school diploma, but to focus on math and science. And, um, and the critical thing is that because a lot of the times, even if you got out of high school and don't want to go to college, you should still be able to pass an Edison Company test, a police department test that just require a high school diploma. Or, um, or as Jim said, be able to read and, 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 and pass written tests for various uh, employment opportunities, but even learn the fundamentals of entrepreneurship. Now, this is not something that they're going to teach you at school, but libraries and educational programs on TV, uh, this whole dynamics of finding alternative um, educational uh, instruments that, because I mean, Carter G. Woodson said we're miseducated, and we're still being miseducated. Uh, uh, yeah, so what do we have to do? We have to sort of, uh, like some parents do, teach their kids to read, write, but also point them in directions uh, by way of uh, education so that they realize that they shouldn't be afraid of numbers and word problems, reading and writing. And, and those are tools and weapons. Uh, the pen is mightier than the sword. Uh, being able, I mean, when we go back to uh, uh, the various newspapers uh, and, and abolitionist news and spiritual newspapers that inspired our people toward freedom and toward struggle, uh, that, that's very important that we learn messages and, uh, and that we become literate, not just for employment, but for uh, struggle and progress uh, and conditions and, and things as nature. And uh, <clears throat> then we, we have to focus also on family, the importance of, of relationships, family, first blood relationships and just uh, ethnic and racial relationships uh, that we see the best of us as a people. And that, I mean, in our own neighborhood, we feel safe. It's, it's bad when you're living in your neighborhood that's predominantly uh, African American or African American and other people of, uh, of, of, of different races and ethnicity. And you don't feel safe. You don't feel comfortable. You feel you have to be strapped. Uh, I mean, not that you, you know, people from outside your community can't come in and create habits. But at the same time, you shouldn't be afraid of your neighbor. So those are dynamics that that I think are very crucial. You know, education uh, is very important. And, that, and, that, and Dr. Naeem Akbar said, education means enthusiasm, bring out the best in you as a people. It draws out that you already have the capacity to learn and, and use these tools of thinking and vision, dreams, thoughts as, as tools. Uh, people envision freedom. People envision uh, art, music, and things of this nature. And as uh, Iwazi was saying, that if, if, the, if, the, if the music don't have a message in it, it should be an instrumental. Uh, it shouldn't be about vaginas and itches with bees and holes with H's and uh, I'm a kill this person and do this and do that and F this and F that and, and, and you know, um, uh, that, that, that's, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 um, it's hard to tell people not to do that when they have the freedom to do it. So you have to educate them not to want to do it. Uh, you can't make them stop, but you can try to educate them to stop themselves. I mean, our biggest, you know, like we try to save our people from themselves. Type of a struggle, as he was saying. 
by introducing them to a more ethical life. So it's a, it's a challenge from that standpoint uh, with regards to um, <clears throat> educating our young people. I mean, there are so many great visionaries that we've had uh, that we have, like um, Julius Nair, introduced African socialism. What is African socialism? The philosophy of economics, of all of us sharing, and that having a, a, a process of, 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 of group eating and group living and group working with uh, the economic corporation of GEMA, um, which is uh, very challenging, you know. And so, as, as the way he was saying, you need some principles to live by. You know, I mean, I grew up hard, real brothers and sisters. And I can't find the people I would like to apologize for doing some of the things I did. But all I could do is just make sure my kids didn't do what I did and uh, teach them uh, ethical and a, a way of, of getting along with brothers and sisters. I had to teach myself not to fight Black people not to steal from black people, not to take advantage of our people, our women and things of that nature. Uh, but as an American, uh, you know, you take advantage of the weak and you take advantage of anybody and everybody around you. It could be your mama, you go in her purse and steal money, you know, and, uh, to, to get some weed or to do something or to gamble versus, uh, you know, you, know you, have to, you, have, you have to have a strong constitution. And I appreciate ways for introducing morals and ethics as a, as, a, as a critical issue. But anyway, anybody want to respond to some of the things I said? Machinda? You there, Machinda? Yeah, I'm here. No, I'm. I'm... Right now, just in list of mode. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a yield right now. Yeah, but you're down in the deep south, and you get a chance to interact with the people there, and you get a chance to talk some of the old timers, not what they think. What, what, do you, what do you, are there any lessons to be learned? Are there is any vision of, of. Uh, ideas that we can use or that you think are, are beneficial that you see them practicing. Because you had mentioned you saw some I uh, saw like a black renaissance coming up. Yeah. Um yeah, you know, like I said, there's several uh, businesses popping up and uh you know you know so um what I'm saying is there are things that are in motion with a lot of people, but, you know, again, you know, that's got to be handed down to the youngsters, you know, to the younger generations. But, um, you know, again, back to the strategy, you know, that's, the, you know, I, like I said, you know, it's, it's, it's a collective strategy um, that requires, you know, as many on deck as possible in terms of like, you know, pushing, you know, the, you know, the agenda, of, of, you know, trying to create positive change for people in general. So, but it's, 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 a, it's just a very intricate process, you know, there's different areas like Rasa Key was talking about, you know, well, we've had discussions like in math, you know, you know, you, there's math, you know, you have to learn certain foundational uh, math before you can elevate to the next level. You know, so there is this, you know, I, I think just in my own microcosm, you know, I, what I see is that um, uh, there are people at different levels, but, you know, it's, it's what I'm saying is it's, it's re getting people to even think, you know, into not just, I think, you know, they mimic a lot of things that they learn, the bad habits that they get from wherever. And uh, and so they get into it and make some, they're 
their own little comfort zone. <clears throat> and so I'm just saying everyday real life, you know, I mean, you already know it's, you know, when you talk with individuals, you know, I deal with individuals every day and, you know, it's like you start somewhere with, them, you know, with some basic, whatever the, uh, uh, you know, the agenda is financial literacy, health, you know, um, you know, any, uh, you know, I mean, impart information. I mean, I've conveyed information to people and I've saw people, you know, implement those things and carry them out and made change for themselves, you know. I've been around long enough to be able to have seen that, so I know it works. But to get more people, you know, like these, here, let you talk about the South, a lot of white folks still control some of a lot of the powers, you know, in terms of uh, decision-making, you know, the votes or, you know, it's five to four, or, you know, six to five, or seven to six, you know, that kind of thing. And they're doing some redistricting right now. I think it's going to be, you know, based on the population. So it looks like, like I say, things are turning, you know. So all of that, you know, because the demographics are changing, therefore, you know, this things are changing. And, and at the end of the day, I'm saying, though, it's a the, it, the people that are doing it are, I'm, I'm talking about the generations before them, because it's like, it's, these are not very young people that are open these. You know, they're young, but they're not like kids. So they're not 19, 20, 21, 22, and they don't have to wait, you know, until they get 22 or 25 to learn about, you know, establishing a business, try to generate some income, you know, because that's just a tool, you know, like not the, you know, the, the you know, worship and money or anything like that, but using it as a tool, as a resource in order to, you know, to build an empire, you know, eventually, you know, to empire meaning, you know, all these other things, like you said, uh, I heard the brother talk about us, uh, uh, you know, being in one accord spiritually, you know, there, there's attempts out there, you know, but does that fit, you know, what we're trying to accomplish, what we feel is necessary. And so, you know, to get people to, you know, to gravitate toward a, a, a united thought process or an agenda, you know, it, it's a task in itself. Because like I said, back to the math analogy, you know, they, some of the fundamentals, so it's got to be broken down. And, you know, and that's, it's just the way it is. You know, you got to, it's, it's, it's work. It's like you chipping away, you know, trying to get them diamonds, you know, get those nuggets of, you know, get people involved in the game, you know, the, the game of truth and life. So anyway, so I don't, you know, I'm I'm good for now though. Okay, brother Roger King, did you want to follow up? Well, um, one thing about if if you are being successful at what you're doing and you you become an example of what to be. Uh, let me give an example. Um, uh, thank you, Professor Ra. You practice moral morality and ethic and ethics, and you show it through your work, through your giving back. So you're providing us a, an example of how to be. Um, you know, you you served on boards. You you taught many students, and if we have people that that has that undying will to do what what's correct, that's a, uh, and it's being passed down. I know I've benefited from the teachings and I know other people have too and other people discuss it. So if you take up that mantle, there's one more person that's headed in the direction we should be going in. So we have to become examples of what to be and we gotta be undenying of doing that. You, you can't, you have to develop that that sense of, of humanity where you where you're doing that as a as your lifestyle. It's like developing a lifestyle. Uh, Brother Hebrick was talking about alcohol. 
nothing good came from alcohol when I was partaking in it as, as far as the long run. So I had to stop drinking alcohol. And, and if I want my environment to change, I have to be a person that's being able to have to change too. And then if I see the benefits of it, I got to keep that practice. So we, we have to become what we think is right mm. and, and take it as a lifestyle. We, we have to change our lifestyles. Mm. I think uh, Waze hit on it. Everybody hit on it. We have to be the moral and ethical vanguards to be able to show people that they can do it also. And it's a constant battle. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, you know, you, you really into health. And, you know, when I was in school and we had to go out to take a health class, they mainly talked about venereal diseases and um, yes, exercise, and things, but they never really talked about nutrition you know, how to eat and live, uh, you know, how to deal with your digestive system, your immune system, and, and the importance of that. They didn't stress nutrition and exercise as, 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 as much as I thought they should have made it uh, something. Uh, you know, I mean, they gave you a health book. And, you know, many of us didn't even read it, but the, the emphasis on it, when you get older, you put a priority on it, and it becomes very important. But you always say, I wish I'd known this when I was younger. You know, I mean, um, then, you know, the, the, I mean, they even teach us about the critical ailments that we face as Black people, like diabetes, and obesity and you know the, the the harmful effects of fried foods and uh, the uh, harmful effects of sugar and salt which is the number one drug uh, food preservatives uh, the, the the challenges of red meat I mean it's, it's like you know the teachers didn't even get into it but even the conscious teachers didn't form health clubs, nutrition clubs on campus uh, because it wasn't a part of the curriculum. The curriculum was about teaching them to pass a test. And, uh, but they got to live, you know. And I'm just saying that, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, that's why we always try to give them some sacred knowledge, some burning sand knowledge, some mystery system knowledge, you know. Um, you know, if, even if it's just five or 10 minutes before the bell rings. Uh, what, what, how do you respond to that, Russell? Do you think that public schools, private schools, and even in the summer home, the youth are getting the education that they need? Right, well, yeah. well, it's it, if if you see a, a a course of behavior that's not conducive to healthy life to a healthy lifestyle, that means that it's your duty. This is like just like we have right here. Each one, teach one. It's your duty as a as a human being to be a, a alarm for your your environment. And and I and that's something that I do do. I, I talk about the importance of water. As a matter of fact, I bring a plethora of fruits and vegetables, not a plethora, but a few. Apple, orange, banana, tomato, cucumber, and water. And my students, students see me drinking that and eating that on a daily basis. So you you have to, whatever you're conveying, you have to be an example of that. And, you know, we, we talk, well, they kind of listen to me a lot, 
because I pick up a lot of information through, and, you know, been picking up throughout the years. And when something come up, I, I have to stop the class. And, you know, we talk about running into fights. You know how they like to record fights. And I have to alarm them that you're going to run there, you're going to run up to a fight or something, and there's going to be a weapon drawn. And you may become a victim of that circumstance. So it's always something that I'm putting on their mind. And, and, you know, whatever I say, I have to portray that. You have to be an example of what you're trying to convey. So that is things that I do do. And, of course, that's some of the things I picked up from, from you, Professor Ra. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that, too. All right, brother. Iwazi, uh, uh, Iwazi, you, you have some more. Uh, you want to share? Um, well, I'm just appreciative of what I've been hearing so far. I've been hearing a lot of good things, positive messages. So I'm keep on listening. And unless you got a specific question. Well, you know, there have been some abuse. Um, one of the primary educational instruments of, of, of black people, spiritual education, uh, religion. And uh, I, uh, uh, they just had an article I sent to Brother Embry and Roger Key about this <clears throat> so called Christian minister in South Africa that just got found guilty of plotting to uh, kill black people and to, uh, to uh, uh, pass their. Uh, Harry Newton appears in the magistrate court in Middleburg, South Africa, Tuesday, May 10th. A South African court convicted a pastor of plotting to overthrow the government and to uh, kill thousands of Black people in the country. Uh, Harry Jones, 61, leader of the National Christian Resistance Movement, was uh, Monday found guilty of high treason uh, in Diamond Now, I don't know if he used religion, <clears throat> but there has been people that have abused religion. That don't mean religion is bad, because some people abuse it or misuse it. I mean, Scriptures say there will be those that be attacked. You know, that, that dispute the word. But if you were to talk about spiritual health, I, I mean, and you got some black people that um, sometimes they take it as if some some people say that many Europeans have used religion as a whip lash the back of black people and to, uh, uh, to victimize the Native Americans. And then there are some that use religion as a liberation tool. So how, how, do, you, how do you feel about that concept? Well, I agree with it. You know, religion is a tool. It's like a knife or a gun. You could use it for you know, to protect yourself, you can use it for self-defense. You know, you can use it to a, a knife to to prepare a meal, <laughs> or you can use it to kill somebody. <laughs> so, religion has been used in the same way. Um, and you know, we, I think, we have been pretty much on the front line of of knowing how it has been used, you know, negatively as well as positively. Um, you know, the Frederick Douglasses, the Martin Luther Kings, the Nat Turners, and the Marcus Garveys, and so forth, used it to advance our liberation causes, while at the same time, you know, and, and during chattel slavery, and even today, uh, religion is being used to, you know, like the Christian, uh, right-wing Christian who would, you know, support a, a George Bush or a Donald Trump uh, and 
in George Bush's uh, war of, on terrorism and, and get behind him wholeheartedly without asking any questions. And then come to find out, you know, there was no weapons of mass destruction at all found in Iraq. But yet the Christian right, they asked no questions. Uh, and as a result, you know, a lot of innocent people got killed. So, you know, I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's clear. And the example that you just gave is just another example of how religion is, is used in, in, the, uh, in the bad way, as just like you said, it was, it was foretold that the false prophets would come, the false teachers would come. It's, it's not a surprise to us. So, you know, I guess the, uh, the onus is on us to, uh, to take it and to uh, show the world what the possibilities are in terms of, um, you know, what, what spirituality should be, what it can be, how it can be trans, uh, transformative in the society and the communities in which we live in and, uh, and just kind of set a counterbalance to some of the negative influences out there. You know, there's, there, where there's light, there's darkness. You know, the up, the down, the black and the white. So, you know, for as many bad examples a person can give, I can, you know, a person can give you the good examples. So that's my take on it. Yeah, that's a good one. Brother Hembrick. Yeah. Uh, I like the Brother Davis's point about the uh, spiritual unity. Uh, I like to refer back to the original spirituality and religion, if you will, which I've stated previously was is nature, which stays the same, you know, man evolved that into these different religions where things change. Nature stays the same. It will teach you how to, how to live, uh, how to do everything for yourself that's needed and be found there. Uh, like I stated earlier, getting back to our ancient ancestors and what they believe in terms of, you know, spirituality through nature. For example, I was, uh, I was at this trip last week and it was a little pool party. It wasn't that hot. It was about 75 or less. And everybody was under shade, under an umbrella, uh, something like that. And I stayed out in the sun sucking up raw. You know, that's what I do because I know that's a part of our ancient culture that we need to be a part of. And I was sitting at the table with a few people and I raised my arms up and I said, Ra, if they don't want it, give it all to me. I'll take it, <laughs> you know, knowing how that uh, activates our melanin and builds up the chakra that are in on the outside and inside of our bodies that keep us in tune, you know, with, you know, with our surroundings, because most of our people don't even know. Uh, but that's, that's a custom of mine. And uh, also as part of the spiritual realm is communicating with the ancestors. Uh, you know, many on the show know how I feel about certain religions and their aspects, you know, all the little angels and all that, but and I know people have had experiences in that realm. And, 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 and my word to them is, I believe that's your ancestors that are doing that. They know you. You know, the, the only reason that you are here is because of them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, I think I sent this quote out to you guys some, about a year ago by this French, uh, no, this Canadian physicist. And I, and, I, uh, and I like to repeat that for those that didn't hear it before, or didn't receive it. He says, man is the most curious of species. He worships an invisible God while he destroys 
of visible nature, not knowing that the nature that he's destroying is the God that he's worshiping. I thought that was quite profound. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where my head is at, because that's where the original ancestors, that's where they were at. And as the stuff moved up to now, you know, you know, different aspects of nature, you know, took on a name as a god and it evolved and went up to now like that. Another thing I like to point I like to comment on was about the uh about the cultural unity. Somebody was speaking about the uh you know, the gas and the food, you know, uh, uh, uh inflationary things. And one aspect of our history I think that can deal with that efficiently is like the uh, uh Kot the Diop wrote about it, I believe it's in his book called Cultural Unity where he talks about the federated state and how like six nations would get together and exchange goods through a barter trade no money takes place uh and that is, you know, that's one of the ways, if we were united, that we can deal with a lot of this stuff that we have to go through in America and other, you know, nations around the world, you know, where where where, where black people live. Uh, you know, the reasons they're there, uh, you know, are, are, are examples for us to draw upon. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, we, you know, we gave the world its first humanity which led to our demise being too humane, you know, with that, you know, with that invader that came in and destroyed almost everything that we had established. So uh, that's all I got to say in that area. But mm -hmm. it's definitely a spiritual thing, uh, but the spirit that we are trying to test to is not the one that our ancient ancestors spoke about. Mm -hmm. uh, you can read uh, the book called uh, uh, The Meta Nature, which is uh, the cultural uh, 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 the, uh, the development of African spirituality, because we are Africans. Uh, and we need to gravitate to the stuff that was ours instead of through this assimilation process, you know, holding on to dear life with the stuff that we learned from, from the enemy. Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna leave it there. You guys have heard me many times before. So I'm not telling you nothing I haven't spoken before. All right, Brother Rock. All right, we're good. Thank you for that analysis. Rashi King, first of all, I wanna thank each and every one of y'all for your commentary. All of them were excellent. And hopefully that we continue to have lively discussions. Um, we'll be focusing on Juneteenth and uh, also uh, the challenges of, of the, uh, and the psychological effects of European holidays on Black people next week. I'll get figures to be announced, but we're going to discuss those issues. And uh, we're also going to have a brother, Tori, uh, who's going to talk about name renaming parts of Crenshaw, Malcolm X. And they're not talking about changing the street name. They're just talking about adding Malcolm X to the street, you know, like right up under Crenshaw Rodeo will be Malcolm X Boulevard. But, they, but the businesses and the residents don't have to change the name, but so I like just putting the sign up. He's going to be discussing that. So, Rajki, you want to tell him about Wednesday and cut and, cut and take his own hour? You're on mute. You're on mute, Rajki. You're on mute. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let me share the screen. Okay, so we have this brother Pruitt with a 
with the A at the end of it, and we we uh, did a typo on our on our web page. He's coming on again, so it'll be the correct heading next time. I just want to acknowledge that. But Brother Pru had been on at least three times on Conscious Corner. He's finally coming over to the CEN show. Very enthusiastic about the African-American Reparations and Sovereignty Program that he's going to talk about. So that's on Wednesday. That's uh, Wednesday of this week. Then he's going to come back on the, on the 27th also. So we'll have it correct, but this is how you get on. It's like everybody got on this evening. So that's what we have on Wednesday. Okay. So, All right. Go ahead, Rusty. Well, so each one teach one in, in conscious corner. Everybody have a good evening. All right. Then. Thanks a lot, brother.